RDAP, which is the drug program. But in order to get RDAP, you have to have some sort of substance abuse within the 12 months prior to your arrest. That could be over-the-counter abuse, prescriptions, legal or illegal. It could be gambling. So regarding Elizabeth, was the pursuit of this unique laboratory blood testing quest something similar to gambling, something to think about? I don't know. That's something for Elizabeth to think about. She has a lot of time. Did she have therapy for anything? Did her Was there anything that she was doing at home that she did not tell her attorneys? Anything at all? Because if there was, then her attorneys need to get to work. She can't mix things up, but they can speak to if there were therapy sessions or anything at all and begin to look into what they can do. They can't reopen the pre-sentence report, but they can begin to get records together and at least speak to the attorney or speak to a mitigation specialist or talk to me or talk to someone else and begin to do something with those records so they don't collect dust. Now we're going to into something that I think is more important because it's never too late. Have they discussed with her the narrative or the release plan? It's never too late. So we're going to talk about the narrative and release plan now. And this is what I have gone ahead. I wrote this for LinkedIn. Personal narrative is writing your story. So what does that mean? It's for, so right now, before, if we, you didn't write the narrative or if Elizabeth Holmes did not write a narrative, the Department of Justice did. It's called her indictment. Nike has their narrative. It's their brand. Just do it. Um, they have it written all over their uh, sneakers and advertising on TV. Tesla, they have their narrative. They show it all the time well, for their car <clears throat> on YouTube's SpaceX. He's very good with his narratives. So writing your story through a narrative tells the judge, or in this point, whomever, what you did, how you came to this point in your life. This is an arduous self-reflective experience. But now she's going to tell a judge. She pretty much has to tell it's this introspective experience that she's going to have to go through on her own, through with, to herself. This is her autobiography between for, of herself and those around her, the good, the bad, and the ugly. She can't enlist anyone else to do it with her, <clears throat> help her mitigate, you know, this particular experience, but it requires 100% of her participation. And it has to include everything from her childhood did she are there siblings you know what did she do what did her parents do was she you know are the brothers sisters adopted not adopted their parents did they work not work did they expect too much of her you know what was her childhood like high school like you know how did you get involved uh with this particular venture what was her involvement was her involvement day to day with all of the operations or did she farm out the some of the operations to other individuals and mind you she's responsible for what every what the buck stops with her it's her company so even though she gave the responsibility to other people it's still her company and so even though she gave the responsibilities out this is still her business and she, she's responsible for what everyone else did and she has to understand, she has to go through and see how it impacted everyone else. People who she went to, not for just money, but for their reputations. This is a big deal. How, in other words, she went to people for that were had very public lives for backing, and some backed her with money, and some backed her with phone calls and reputations. And, you know, in looking back, 
it didn't look good on each and every one of them. And so what is her plan? If she has a plan, how can she make that right? It's a traumatic event for her, but it was a traumatic event for them. And so as she goes through this, there needs to be a point where there's an aha moment where she finally sees daylight, you know, and she needs to accept responsibility for she's the owner of the business. People, you know, people offered money. Sure. People lost money. It hurt some people have their reputations hurt. It's not okay. It really is not okay. And so what her, what are her plans? You know, I mean, you, she can't make plans, but she needs to come to a grip with the fact that she's responsible, has accepted remorse, and has to understand that she needs to come to a a place where she understands that she needs to show that she needs to make things right with her victims, with the community of influential victims that she cultivated over the years, as well as the judge, the community, her family. And this could take several years to develop. It's not going to happen right away. And this is her story. And by the time it's done, and it will take six months of rewrites, but if she's willing to face her demons, potentially it could be um, a cathartic moment by the time it's done. You know, and it will, you know, it may be able to, I'm reading here, it says sincere indictment of the rest. Of, it may be able to show that she's, you know, that she's maybe learned from what she's put others through. And she's able to take the next step. Potentially, she's smart enough to make things right. And so what does this aha moment do? Well, before I get to that, to show the, to show the case managers, which are her stakeholders, who are responsible for her future while she's in prison. Don't let, don't pay other people to do your jobs. Do your own job. Take quiet time, get settled in prison there, and just take quiet time to, to get, be at peace with your own thoughts. Don't forget, don't, don't let people tell you that the outside's the outside and you're inside. You need to, you can't shut the outside world out. Otherwise, it's just not good. I did that, and it doesn't work. It's going to be a shock to your system, but prison is temporary. And there are going to be those that want to take advantage of you, and you, you should be able to see it. You're a smart girl. But if you're able to write this narrative and have that aha moment, it's never too late to start. And that narrative what can can become your release plan together with your first step back programming, the reading of books. Maybe you're able to create a course. Lord knows you're smart enough for with a syllabus for the others there, because you're probably going to be the smartest person in the room. Just don't let everybody else know that. And it can be a couple of days a week, run it for several months, see what happens, but show it to the case manager and counselor. And if they like it, they'll show it to their supervisors. It'll get passed. Maybe it may get passed. It may get turned into a first step act class. 